here, so I'm hoping everybody's finding this, is my museum masterpieces. And this is book A. And this is also, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't label this, but I think it's primary three. I have my book with me. I will double check it. Um, I had all of these things with a little label on it. But um, does anyone have their book with them? Okay. Book one. Sorry, 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 sorry. So we're in, I'm looking in book, yes, so this is book A, sorry, book B, excuse me. Book B of Museum Masterpieces. And I think this should be in primary three. Oh, here it is. Or is it primary? city, you know, and I don't have to be at the next city 
you know, immediately because uh, I'm in a car. Is, is there a good art museum around here? So they said, oh, you know, you should try the Jaglin. Um, and I went there and I saw this cool, cool painting uh, that if you look at the painting, I, sh I should have had it up in my thing here, but um, I'll show it to you later when I get to the slides. But if you look in here in the book um, on page 14, you can see that there's three picnickers having a little picnic, and then there's a herd of buffalo out of the blue come charging at them, stampeding towards them as they're having their nice leisurely picnic. And I just thought it was just a funny thing, and it was sort of capturing that era when people were starting to settle and move more west. And so here were these people not expecting to have a herd of buffalo come at them. Uh, because they were coming from the east, and uh, and there they were. And now I only hesitated to use this artwork because I was afraid teachers would say to me, I can't fit this title on my program, you know, at recital time. Oh. So, um, and I, but I just recently um, on my Facebook page posted me playing that piece, and um, so I got so much feedback from teachers writing. I love this piece, and my students love the title, and they love announcing it, and everybody laughs when they have it. So here we go, just a little bit of, um, so you'll hear my artwork attempt to have um, this, the, the rumble of the approaching. like French and ballet, and here is the star. So little chance. Something that was a grand ending, 
uh, that fit the title of the start, you know? So again, when they see the artwork, it sort of helps them tell the story. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next thing that's in, and that one is in elementary three of the Federation list, the star. Next I wanted to show you from, um, this is in moderately difficult three. And this is the prelude in A minor. Um, and it's from book three. I think, I'm not sure how they listed it. I have to look at how they listed it in the bulletin. But I, if they, I think they just listed it as book three. So let me just look at this one here. Yeah, just book three. So what I wanted to tell you, it's, it's listed, so it's in moderately difficult three, uh, and in Preludes for Piano book three. The reason I had them put in your um, packet, the complete, was because I wanted you to know about it because it's such a bargain. Um, it's it's uh, the whole, this is a compilation. What happened was I wrote Preludes for Piano book one first, and that was my first book with Alfred. And then I wrote uh, book two a couple years later, and then it was like almost 20 years later, I believe, that they said, you know, your preludes are still so popular that we would like you to do a book three. But what happened was that when they brought out the book three, most people never knew there was a book three. So people would just say, there is a book three, you and I told them. So then they decided, you know what, let's just put it into a collection. So all three books are in one collection, and it is, um, so the price is, I think, the three books less than nine two books. So that's why I thought teachers would want to know about this, but it's also why I think teachers want to know about this is I think it's a great book to give to teenage students uh, because it's very patterned, and it's patterns that can help them then later on if they're playing Chopin. For example, in the one that I'm going to show you, in that's in the Federation Festival Bulletin, it's this. So I'm going to come back to it in a second, but that that movement, which I call compass pivot, is this is prelude number five in A minor from book three. And in your book, it's on page 42. So you may have to search around for it. But that is great prep for students if they're going to try and play a music like this, you know, where they're having to make that kind of movement with the arm and stay loose and relaxed. So this is like really great preparation for that. Um, but I'm going to try and play you quite a bit of that piece so you get an idea. But then I want to say to you, um, I hope that maybe a couple of you have felt this way, but I, but I have heard this for so many years from teachers, is that the prelude is their piano, uh, piano presenter, whatever we want to call it, sort of their Bible for going to gigs when they have to play for church or wedding or any kind of background music because they say, I sound really good and I barely have to practice because I can read all of these. So um, so I thought you'd want to know about it from that perspective because playing through this piece is like sort of a whole gig and, and you barely have to practice to sound good. <laughs> so that's a really nice element for the teacher. And then for students, it's a great thing for if you have students that are even doing more difficult things like some Chopin stuff, but it's taking them a long time to get through. So this can be fast learned where they learn about expressive and shaping, or it can be for a developing student who you're trying to bridge now into patterns that are more preparing them for Chopin and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna show you the one that's in Federation, page 42 again.
wanted to just share with you. This is on page four. So this is from book one. I'm showing you a little bit. Of And 
to, I was sort of thinking of, I wanted to show you this, but I'm not seeing where I put it, my little uh, shaker. Did you happen to see my little? Um, I just wanted to show you this. Yes. So obviously you're not going to probably go to your federation with this in hand, but Like to, I love doing these things at recital. They just make it really, really fun to add in that little element. So, um, but the whole, I'm not going to play you all of the book, but the whole book is really, you know, pieces that students really have enjoyed so much. Um, I'm going to go next to your book three of Sounds of Spain. And happily, I, what happened was I came out with book one and two, and then it was 10 years after that, I believe, that I was at the California State Convention, and I just, everywhere I walked, because my book one and two were on their list for California, and so everywhere I went in the big exhibition hall, I was hearing, you know, sounds of Spain everywhere, which was very exciting, and so I had so, and at this particular conference, that they had lots of things going on for the students. So students were coming up to me and having me autograph their music and all that. And so I had so many students and teachers saying, could you come out with a book three? So I was very, you know, kind of inspired from that experience. And um, and you'll see, and this is not the one that's on the list, um, but if you look at, at uh, page two, El Torero, that is not on the list, but I think it was on the list. <coughs> One. And it's it is for the Music Teachers Association of California because I figured they would have the first dedication. So I'm just showing you a little bit. <laughs>
and moderately difficult three, and this is Gypsy Flamenco. So page 10. and you'll hear 
my nightingale. Of Granados. 
see if you can hear it. Not in the beginning, but I based this on the theme from Maiden and Nightingale, which is just gorgeous, but I think almost impossible to play. Uh, it just, it takes such incredible, I only heard a couple people play it in my lifetime that I thought were good, but here we go, it's on page six. <laughs>